Have you ever wondered why there's so much police brutality against African Americans? Have you ever wondered why there's so much black on black crime? Have you ever wondered why they're building a wall to keep the Mexicans out? Have you wondered why there's so much famine in the world and bombing of third world countries? In this hard hitting video, we're going to tell you exactly why. So be prepared to comment as we go. Well, I'm going to show you why black lives don't matter. Maybe you have to hear this from another black man. Why black lives don't matter. Why they can kill us in the street. Why they can just do whatever they want to to us. I was doing, I was working on another class yesterday. And I ran across this verse, this, this chapter out of Jubilees as I was working on a class. And, you know, when I saw this article on, on YouTube talking about Black Lives Matter or whatever, it was like secondary confirmation. You know what? I'm going to go ahead and do it. Look, look, look here. This is a book called Jubilees. First of all, you need to know who the black man is. You know, they, they call him black because they don't want you to understand he has a history where he came from. They, they want to erase the black man's history and say that, he, you know, they found him in some unsophisticated area over there in Africa or whatever. You know what I mean? That ain't true. These people had a history. These people were kings. These people were priests. These people had the original civilizations. When you do the DNA and I've done my DNA, when you do the DNA and you you look at these people what you find is that the haplo group falls back to the to the language people which means these were the first these people are of the hebrew language the first language that was ever on the planet is where these people came from but you got to understand what what happened over the time after the after after the messiah was killed there on the cross you had a few individuals that were still trying to hold together the teachings of the of of the messiah yeah they were in rejection of him sure you know and that's what the people going to say that they rejected to Christ when when Christ died on the cross there he only had about a hundred followers you can read in Acts only about a hundred people were there at the feast of Pentecost when they received the Holy Spirit or whatever so yeah he they, he they rejected him or whatever but you know after that after they received the Holy Spirit there was three thousand more people who joined the church and these people continue to grow and continue to grow until 300 AD 300 AD about 312 AD is when a guy named Constantine came in and he and came in and first of all he was trying to annihilate these Hebrew people these black people he was trying to kill them the same way that they had been killing them back there on the cross before Yahushua Muhammad Shiach was put on the cross he was trying to annihilate them then but then what happened was, you know, when he realized that he couldn't beat them, when he realized that, you know, the more he tried to kill them, the more he tried to suppress them, the more they turned to their scripture and the more they grew, he, he changed his strategy. He came up with some idea that or he came up with some idea that the Lord told him to put his name on all of his shields and all of that stuff. And he ended up tricking the people. He walked in there with the Lord's name all over his shields, all over his horses and all over this stuff. He ended up tricking the people and they believed in him and believed that he had been converted to one of them and so what did they do they gave him their books they allowed him doing a council of Nicaea they gave him all of the scriptural documents and and brought them to him so they can have some big meeting back there in 300 AD where they decided which books they were going to include in the Bible and they left out certain books any books that they didn't like they kicked them out particularly one right here the book of Jubilees was one book that they kicked out of the scripture I'm going to tell you why your black life don't matter. I'm going to show you right here in scripture why your black life don't matter. I'm going to go up here to the Pseudepigrapha. These are apocryphal books, hidden books, books they took out of the Bible, books they didn't want you to see. That's the reason why they didn't want you to see them, because they didn't want your black life to matter. They wanted to be able to do exactly what they're doing to you right now, enslaving you, killing you, trying to kick you out of the country, anything they want to do. And they, and they, can, have their way, they can have their way with you. And I'm going to show you why right here. Let's look right here in verse 7. The Jubilees is a book that was written by Moses. You know, and, 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 and this is the, the father talking to Moses and telling him what's going to happen in the future here. Look right here. Verse 7. He says, and do thou write for thyself all these words which I declare unto you this day, for I know their rebellion and their stiff neck. So this is the father telling him about his people. He's telling him about this chosen seed who was slated to carry the, the scripture all the way up to 312 when the, when the Roman Catholic Church snatched it out of their hands. He was telling them this is a rebellious people. This is 
a stiff neck people. This is a hard headed people right here. And I know what they're going to do. Look right here. It says before I bring them into the land of which I swear unto their fathers, to Abraham and to Isaac and to Jacob, saying unto your seed, will I give a land flowing with milk and honey? This is talking about America here, guys. We're not here by any accident. Look at look at Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 68. We're, we're, it was told even back then that we were going to be caught. We were going to be floated over to this nation in yokes of iron around our neck naked and we were going to serve these people for 400 years he told them that even back then and why because they were rebellious because they were stiff necked here goes the answer right here why your black life don't matter because you're rebellious and because we're stiff necked but you know for the ones who want to learn the scripture let's keep going let's look at let's let's keep going and they will eat and be satisfied this is talking about when they get over here to the land they're going to eat and they're going to be satisfied look at us now you know we're eating and we're satisfied just acting like acting like you know don't nothing matter we just do whatever we want to do and they will turn to strange gods here you go this is why your black life don't matter we've all turned to strange gods the gods of the white man we've turned to christmas we've turned to easter we've turned to halloween these are all pagan gods that they're celebrating all around they have they have what they call a, a pagan calendar or whatever and each and and there are eight of these uh holidays all around the calendar that these pagan people have been celebrating for thousands and thousands of years long before Yahashua HaMashiach ever hit the earth these people were celebrating Christmas they were they didn't call it Christmas they called it something else you know what I'm saying but they were celebrating Halloween that that holiday would have you ever wondered why that holiday includes Easter bunnies and eggs because it has nothing to do with Yahashua HaMashiach this was a pagan feast that they've been celebrating for a long time and on that day is when they worship that God that is a God the name of that feast begins with a E that is a that is the name of a God it's, it's kind of you know it's kind of changed to fit in the English a little bit but I ain't gonna say it because it, it points back to a God that's what it means right there and they will turn to strange gods this is why this is why black lives don't matter because we've put down the true father we've put down the true creator and we are now celebrating with these strange gods to gods which cannot deliver them from out of their tribulation Christmas can't save you the Easter Bunny can't save you you know what I'm saying? Santa Claus can't do nothing for you. A jack-o'-lantern on your push is not going to help you at all. But you, but yet, you know, that's what we're doing. And that's why black lives don't matter. In this witness shall be heard for a witness against them. For they will forget all of my commandments. Yeah. yeah. You know what I mean? We, 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 we have adopted the, the pagan beliefs that we don't need the commandments anymore. We fall for the old trick. What do they say? Yahushua HaMashiach. Or they say Jesus got rid of all of the commandments and we don't have to do them anymore. It's Jesus died on the cross for our sins. So now we can sin all that we want. We can do whatever we want. We don't have to pay attention to any of the statutes, the ordinances, the commandments, any of the rules. We can just do whatever we want. Even all that I commanded them and they will walk after the Gentiles. That's why our black lives don't matter, guys. We are acting like Gentiles. We are over here supposed to be kings and priests, but yet we're doing the Gentile stuff. We're doing exactly what they do. You know what I mean? So no, our black lives don't matter. Let's keep going. He says, and after their uncleanliness and after their shame and will serve their gods and they will prove unto them an offense and a tribulation and an affliction and a snare. Yep, guys, we're ensnared by taking on and participating with the Gentiles in their pagan feasts. We are we are ensnared. They, they have us trapped. We can't do anything. People want to people. That, that, that's what that trending thing over there talking about. We can't breathe or whatever. Yeah, we can't breathe. We, we are trapped in this system. We are trapped in what they're doing to us. I ain't gonna say they're doing it to us. We did it to us. It's our fault. I, you know, blame it on our forefathers or whatever and say our forefathers turned their back on the on the father even before we were, you know, floated over here on them boats or whatever. But the thing is, how much effort are we doing to get back where we're supposed to be? How much effort are we putting forth in order to get back in the commandments? You got people clicking off this video right now because they don't want to hear nothing about keeping the commandments. Uh oh, we talking about keeping the commandments. Some folk thought I was talking about going, you know, do some type of rise up or whatever. This is the rise up. You want to rise up against oppression? Pick up your Bible and start reading Exodus chapter 20 and keep going all the way to chapter 24 and when he get to 24 verse 7 he says all, all that you have said will we do and be obedient realize what he just realized that he just made a contract with our forefathers a contract that we are still under today and then go back and start reading it all over again and realize that we have to keep this contract we have to do exactly what it says look at verse 9 
and many will perish and they will be taken captive. We are captive, guys. That's why we are captives. We are slaves right now. You look at the end of the book. Of, you look at the end of and I, you. I, I, I need to calm down. You look at the end of the movie Roots where after the um. That was a very educational movie, the movie Roots. One of the at the very end of the movie, you had the 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 little white guy that comes in to the big boss man and says, "Hey, boss man, they just released all of the slaves. What are we gonna do now?" And the boss man looked at him. He said, "No, son, they didn't release the slaves. They just changed slavery around, and now white people and black people are slaves." <laughs> You know what I mean? I, I need to get that part of the movie and put it in there because, you know, we're all captives right now. We, we only, The only reason why we don't consider ourselves slaves is because of labor laws that prevents them from working us long hours, makes them pay us a certain amount of money and prevents them from beating us. If it were not for those labor laws, guys, I promise you they will be treating you like slaves today. But we just have a little, little few labor laws that makes it so that we can we we, we 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 don't mind being in slavery now. You know what I mean? We we actually believe that we're actually supposed to be in slavery now in 2019. Everybody thinks you're supposed to be in slavery. You know what I'm saying? Everybody thinks you're supposed to have a job or whatever. No, that's slavery, man. You are we are in slavery and will fall into the hands of the enemy. Yeah, we're in the hands of the enemy. This is why black lives don't matter, guys. We are in the hands of the enemy. What can we do about it? Ain't nothing we can do about it. You got the people on there going down to that courthouse trying to get just talking about they want justice or whatever. No, <laughs> you, 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 we, we ain't gonna get no justice because they have forsaken my ordinances and my commandments and the festivals of my covenant and my Sabbaths. You, you know what? This is why, guys, you know, the, the, the rule, the ordinances, the commandments, those are all rules to tell us how we're supposed to live. Those are where we get our power from. Those is how we had power. This is why we was able to rise to to having such a powerful kingdom so many hundreds of years ago over in Nigeria. And that's why we don't have any power now, because we gave up our ordinances and we gave up our commandments following after the Pope and his rules and the festivals. How, how about how about there's a whole lot of people going to be sitting, you know, in hell or whatever, so to speak, put up my, my hand quotes or whatever. They're going to be sitting in hell realizing that they're there because they didn't drink wine on a certain day. They, they didn't want to drink wine. They didn't want to eat lamb. You know, they had a problem with sleeping in a tent or whatever. So they rejected his festival days and started keeping up with pagan holidays and doing what the pagan people do, getting Christmas trees and all of that kind of stuff. Uh, th those are part of the covenant found in Leviticus 23. Those seven feasts are mandatory, guys. We're supposed to do those. And because we don't do those, our black lives don't matter. Look right here. The Sabbath, it, it, we don't keep the Sabbath anymore. That's a sign. That's the mark of God. The Sabbath day is the mark of God right now. If you don't keep the Sabbath day, you have the mark of the beast. People wondering what the mark of the beast is. You need to find out what the mark of God is. And then you'll then you'll know what the mark of the beast is. Just go opposite and says, and my holy place, which I have hallowed for myself in, in their midst and my tabernacle talk about and my sanctuary, which I have hallowed for myself in the midst of the land that I should set my name upon it and that it should dwell there. This is the Holy Spirit in you guys. This is ta he's talking about the how that inner temple inside of us, how he lives inside of us. But people are denying that they don't want to have nothing to do with that. They want to keep running around acting like the Gentiles acting. They deny that they even have the Holy Spirit at all. That's why our black lives don't matter. Look right here. Verse 10. And they will make themselves high places and groves and groves. Graven images. Yeah, this is high places. Those talking about your churches and stuff, guys. That's why they put a big steeple on the top of that church just to turn it into a high place. And graven images and stuff. Those are the little coins that we worship. We call it money or whatever. That thing on that coin is a graven image. We're so busy worshiping money right now that we can't worship the Father. And that's why I'm black. And that's why our lives don't matter. What is that? And they will worship each his own graven image so as to go astray. And they will sacrifice their children to demons. Yeah, guys, you know what? There's some people that believe that letting your kids go to go to public school is sacrificing your kids to demons. What are they teaching them? They're only teaching them to be slaves. They're only teaching them to be dependent on, on the system, to be dependent on the government. They ain't, you go in there and talk about teaching anything out of the Bible and what's going to happen? They're going to chase you out of there, you and your kids out of there. They don't want nothing to do with that. Why? Because they want your kids to grow up so far from the father that now they can rape you in the street. Now they can shoot you and ain't nothing you can do about it. It. You're so detached from the creator that your black life don't matter anymore. You know what I mean? So, yeah, so you're sacrificing your kids to that. 
and to all the works of the error of their hearts. And I will send witnesses unto them that I may witness against them. Yeah, guys, talking about the 144,000. You got individuals out here trying to tell you this now. They're in the streets in some of our cities trying to tell you this. You got people in, in what do they call them, black Hebrew Israelites or something like that. Individuals trying to tell you who you are. But, you know, you walk right past them. You know what I'm saying? Here you go walking with your pagan co-workers down the street. And you like just, you know, ignoring those guys and act like they don't matter when they're trying to tell you that you're not supposed to be living that kind of lifestyle but you don't care you're getting paid you get money you get to hang out with the with the pagans or whatever and celebrate christmas or whatever so you're ignoring the witnesses that he sent here for you but they will not hear and will slay the witnesses also yeah you're killing these people these people that come in and try to tell you the truth you're killing them you're putting them in play you, 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 if you're not if you're not actively calling the sheriff department on them and trying to have them assassinated, you're doing stuff like keep you doing stuff like oppressing them and making sure they don't get anything, making it hard on them so they so they can't survive. You 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 making it so so what what did it say? If they not willing to go out and serve money, if they don't want to serve money and worship money, then they shouldn't be able to have food for their children or they should live in poverty or whatever. Yeah, guys, that's what we're doing to his witnesses, the people who are trying to tell us what's on track. We're helping to press them we helping to keep them down especially the family members you know what i mean but we're gonna go on and they will persecute those who seek the law yeah guys that's what you're seeing now that's what's up with all of these hurricanes and all of these earthquakes and all of this bad stuff that's going on they are persecuting the people that are trying to keep the law and the earth is going not going to stand for that the earth is going to fight back to protect these people but is it going to get better after the tribulation is going to get better until then they're going to keep on oppressing these people they're bombing them over there in certain countries they're killing them over here in america they're building big walls to keep them out or whatever. Well, as as this oppression keeps on, as this persecution keeps on, you will start to get more and more earthquakes, more and more storms, more hurt, more tornadoes and hurricanes, more volcanoes. You're going to start to get bugs to, and stuff to start biting people and all kinds of stuff about to start happening. Why? It's because they are persecuting those who seek the law, those who say that we are supposed to keep the ordinances. We are supposed to keep the statutes. We are supposed to keep the commandments. Those people people are being persecuted by the materialistic people by the pagans by the people who love Christmas and all of this kind of stuff are persecuting these people and they will abrogate and change everything so as to work evil before my eyes. Yeah, guys, they're changing it. We've changed the rules saying that Yahushua Hama saying that Jesus got rid of all of the rules and we can do whatever we want. That's what it means. They changed stuff, changed the Sabbath day, changed everything. You know, they changed what they want. And, and the, the odd thing about it is they changed it. To pagan stuff. They changed it back to what they've already always believed in. Like I told you a story a few minutes ago about how the Catholic Church took the Holy Bible out of the Hebrews' hands there. Did they did it did they all of a sudden they try to become good Hebrews and try to do what the Bible says? Nope. They changed it and, and went right back to their pagan stuff. All of this stuff you see them doing over there in the Vatican talking about they Christians or whatever. But we ain't gonna talk about that. Let's go on. And after this, they will turn to me from amongst the Gentiles with all their heart and with all their soul and with all their strength. Yeah, guys, now we're starting to change over here. Now we're starting to switch up to see how it is you're going to get your power back. After the world, after the, after all of this persecution and stuff on his people have, have basically got the world all up in an uproar or whatever. And then we have this big world or this big worldwide earthquake that's going to shake down every building. Now, all of a sudden, the people are going to want to start doing something. And what does it say about his? holy people right here and they will turn to me from amongst the gentiles with all their hearts and with all their soul and with all their strength yeah once this earth starts shaking or whatever and they start losing all their material possessions and start wondering if they're going to die or whatever then they're going to start turning to him then they're going to start paying attention want to keep rules and start to want to read the bible understand what it is we're supposed to be doing and i will gather them from all the gentiles and they will seek me yeah so you know this is the end times plan here this is what's going to happen after after, uh, it, it's just it's a shame it's going to take such a horrific tribulation to get them there but hey i understand you have to be stripped of all of this material stuff you have to be stripped of all of that pagan stuff then you'll start to realize the truth then you'll start to care anymore right now people just don't care anymore as long as they got money they don't care about nothing else you know what i'm saying so that i shall be found of them 
when they seek me with all their heart and with all of their soul. Now, this is what the tribulation is for. Some of you guys have heard about the tribulation. This is why we're going to have it. This is why we're going to have a tribulation in order to get these people's minds back right, guys. Your black lives don't matter. Your black lives is supposed to matter. You are some of the most important people here in America right now. It is going to be up to you guys to save humanity. You're going to look at Daniel and what he says about how you, how you guys are going to do valiantly. That's why they make so many movies about you. That's why that's why you turn on movies that they portraying you as superheroes and all of this is because you're supposed to be superheroes. You were superheroes when you were keeping the commandments and the ordinances. You gave up all your powers when you started acting like pagans or whatever. But in the end and you start seeing all of this stuff coming down on us and you start to pick up the commandments and start picking up the rules. You're going to start picking up your superhero powers again. And that's why they portraying you in the movies as superheroes. And I will disclose to them a bounding peace with righteousness and I will remove them the plant of uprightness with all my heart and with all my soul. And they shall be a blessing, not for a curse. And they shall be the head and not the tail. You've already heard this. You always heard this, guys, the head and not the tail. You know, you've been the tail the whole time. You've been the tail since 1611 or whatever. But that's going to change, guys. Once we start picking up the rules, picking up the commandments and the ordinances, that's when the switch is going to happen. That's that's when we're going to change and stop being a tail. We're going to start being ahead now. It don't take the tribulation to get there. It takes the commandments to get there. Guys, like I said, Exodus chapter 20 through 24 verse 7. That's how we get our power back. That's how you start to make your black lives matter. That's how you stop being a tail and start becoming a head. Look at verse 16. And I will build my sanctuary in their midst and I will dwell with them and I will be their God and they shall be my people in truth and in righteousness. Talking about talk, talking about the return of the whole Holy Spirit talking about the return of the Father. He's coming back in spirit and in truth, guys. He's coming back on the inside of us, not some outside figure. He's or you know the Antichrist or something like that. He's going to be on the inside. He's already there now. All you got to do is look for him, start picking up his commandments, start doing charitable deeds and such. You'll find him in there now. But you, but that's going to require you to put down your materialism and put down those lies. Stop listening to T.D. Jakey and all them lies they're talking about over there and start listening to truth. But you know you'll get there eventually. Hard headed folk are going to make it too. Just going to take them a minute. Look at verse 17. And I will not forsake them nor fail them, for I am the Lord their God. Yeah, you know what I mean? What, but. The thing is, guys, once we while we are away from his rules, his commandments, statutes, ordinances, precepts, we we are abandoned. We are forsaken. You know what I'm saying? That, that what does he say? That life belongs to those who keep the commandments. As long as we're not keeping the commandments, guys, it's almost like we deserve to die. And they're proving it to us every day, killing us in the streets. You know what I'm saying? There ain't nothing we can do about it but pick up our Bible and start to read and start to understand what it is we're supposed to be doing. All right, y'all, here come Moses right now. Moses is like he he's just heard this prophecy. This, he just heard the father telling him what's about to happen. And so Moses goes on to try to, to, to try to straighten some of this stuff out. Moses goes and starts pleading for the father. And Moses fell on his face and prayed and said, Oh, Lord, my God, do not forsake thy people and thy inheritance. This is Moses talking futuristically. He said, Lord, don't do this. You, you, you mean you going to let all of this bad stuff happen to him? But well, how did he sell out? <laughs> how did he start off? He told them they were rebellious. They were stiff necked. They were hard headed. It ain't him that did it to him. They did it to themselves by being being stiff necked and hard headed and putting down the rules and picking up pagan holidays and doing the stuff of the pagan acting like Gentiles. He, that's what he was telling Moses because they're going to act like this. This is going to happen to them. So that they shall wander in error of their hearts and do not deliver them into the hands of the enemies. Yeah, don't leave Moses begging. Don't let them get in the hands of the enemies. Well, what, what the father should have, what the father was telling Moses was, don't let them change. Moses, you got to do something to convince these people to stay in the word. You have to convince them to stay in the commandments and stay in the rules. Moses, you know what I mean? You, you don't want these people to fall in the hands of the Gentiles. You better somehow keep them in the scripture, lest they should rule over them and cause them to sin against. Yep, because that's what's happening. We're sinning against the Father. We're breaking His rules. We're breaking. So, and then we turn around and ask for His protection. Ask for Him to do something for us. You know. And then we wonder why our prayers don't get answered. Why we have to go down to the bank and take out loans to get stuff. Why we even, even, even some of us are even using credit cards to buy our food right now. We're financing food right now. Let Thy mercy, O Lord, be lifted up upon Thy people and create in them an upright spirit. And let not the spirit of Belial rule over them to accuse them before thee and to ensnare them from all the paths of righteousness so that they may perish from before thee 
but they are but they are thy people and thy inheritance, which thou hast delivered with thy great power from the hands of the Egyptians. Create in them a clean heart and a holy spirit, and let them not be ensnared in their sins from henceforth until eternity. This is Moses. This is Moses praying, saying, you know what? Don't let all of this happen to these people. All of this stuff that's going on now, this was Moses pleading with the Father not to let it happen, not to let it go on. But, you know, it's going on. Let's see what the Father had to say in verse 21. And the Lord said unto Moses, I know their contrariness and their thoughts and their stiff neckedness and they will not be obedient till they confess their own sin and the sin of their fathers yeah so you know stiff neckedness contrariness this is us this is why black lives don't matter because we are contrary and because we are stiff necked and what does it say and they will not be obedient meaning us we ain't gonna be obedient until what until they confess their own sin and the sin of their fathers so we have to realize that our fathers transgressed our fathers walked away our fathers turned their back on him so now now we have to confess not only that sin, but we have to confess our sin that we are still walked away, that we are still disobedient to his word, that we are still in rejection of his commandments and his ordinances and such. Once we confess those sins, then we can start to get back on track, start to get back where we're supposed to be. And after this, they return to me in all uprightness and with their heart and with their soul. And I will circumcise the foreskin of their heart and the foreskin of the heart of their seed. And I will create in them a Holy Spirit and I will cleanse them so that they shall not turn away from me from that day until eternity yeah guys so you know the father's plan is for us to get back with him it, 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 we're, we're just scattered right now we're just learning our lessons the hard way right now the the, the pagans the Gentiles ha are having their way with us but you know what this is going to be a hard lesson that we're never going to forget what does he say not going to turn from me from that day until eternity yeah from the day we realize the errors that we have been making and what it's going to take to get back we're never going to turn away again and for, for until this planet goes up in the flames we're going to be steadfast on his commandments and his rules and, and his word and doing what he say and their soul will cleave to me and to all my commandments and they will fulfill my commandments and I will be their father and they shall be my children and then our black lives are going to start mattering again all lives are going to start mattering again people are not going to be enslaved by the this goes for the, the Caucasian Gentile this goes for everybody Every lie, everybody who does this everybody who turns to his commandments their lives are going to matter again and they shall all be children of the living God and every angel and every spirit shall know yeah they shall know that these are my children and that I am their father in uprightness and righteousness and that I love them but it is after their time guys after we get back after we realize who we are do we start to get in this uprightness and his righteousness that he's talking about and start to feel his love again until then guys you know until then you know they're going to keep proving to us that our black lives don't matter until we pick up the commandments. You got these people over here making these YouTube videos, pleading for justice, trying to get sympathy or whatever. You know what I'm saying? It, it, it ain't going to help. It ain't going to do nothing. Everybody, everybody in that whole audience could have pulled out their cell phone and made a sympathetic little video, posted it on YouTube, and it ain't going to help not one little bit. It ain't going to change nothing. They ain't going to fire the police. They ain't going to stop them from killing them in the future. They ain't going to they ain't gonna stop deporting. They ain't going to stop doing all of the stuff that they're doing to the Hebrew people right now. What's going to change it, guys, is picking up the rules, picking up the statutes. You know what? And before and before you blow it off and start quoting the pagan religion saying that Jesus got away from your sins, just read it, guys. Pick up Exodus chapter 20 and read all the way to chapter 24, verse 7. And that's what's called the Book of the Covenant. That is the contract that we're in right now. That is what we're held responsible for. Before you blow it off and say we ain't supposed to be doing that anymore, go ahead and read it for yourself. What you're going to find out is that it all makes sense that it seems like something we're supposed to be doing in the first place so you know give, give yourself a chance before you before you blow it off i know i'm a little bit riled up right now you know what i'm saying it's, it's kind of yeah, pluck my nerve a little bit but you know if you're new to the channel you know we don't usually we don't usually get this excited over the word or whatever but we do do a lot of scriptural classes so you guys go ahead and, and check out our channel look down there where you see coaching the fight down there close to the description click on that and, and look through our channels look at some of the videos that we post up and, and stuff like that it has a lot to do with truth and understanding of his word we pull out a lot of stuff so you guys go ahead and check us out maybe consider subscribing to the channel